Bien, are you? Uh, so, I was trying to think, you know what, do I want to talk about it so fast? Okay, okay, I just want to share with you about my hobby, okay? So it all started many, many years ago when I decided I wanted to collect recipes for happiness. I wanted to know what you know that I don't know. I always get struck by other people. You know what? So that they know. And I have this intense desire to maximize my potential to be the best version of myself, right? So this has probably led to do with the fact that my parents don't speak English or I grew up in a violent house or anything. Just the fact that I'm really curious. I had a boyfriend who said, like, I wish you weren't so curious, but I am. I really just want to master life while I'm here on this earth. I don't want to make lots of mistakes, right? So I've plodded along. Are you kidding this, or is it just me trying to talk really fast? Okay, okay. So I've plodded along collecting hap um, recipes. First, happiness, because, you know, I was a confused kid, and then a gormless teen, and then in like, my 20s, like, full-on existential angst. I always call it, like, 10 years too long, my 20s. And, of course, wisdom was seeking that. And, you know, parental kind of wisdom, especially when it br bringing up children, I didn't want to subject them to the same sort of torture I thought I did. And this current time, I want to collect recipes for business acumen, money, and all that sort of stuff. And then I know I've met a lot of people during this setting, and not one of them as a determinate setting for, like, success. And then collecting happiness is one way of, like, just finding the roots, because so many of us just look out at the branches, look out around us and then the journey inwards is really quite vital so what I've learned is that it's an ongoing process it's really important to appreciate the fact that every day is about putting one foot in front of the other and the people I've counted I've kind of just put into three large groups or three main groups so the first type of people I've kind of encountered are the ones who are very engaged and these are the people who you know when they walk they have a spring in their gate and they're kind of really excited to talk to you about everything they love what they're doing and it doesn't matter if they're failing at this time or not good at it because they want to get better at it. So they can be successful because they're rich or successful because they're happy, but they're engaged people. And they're engaged because they ask themselves two questions, and this is what I found out at least. They tend to ask themselves this question, what makes me flow? So what makes you flow is when like, you know, you're doing something and time stands still, and then like next thing you know, it's a few hours later. Something that's meaning for you to in some way. And then they inevitably will always ask themselves, what does that look like? Because you have to be specific, otherwise you can't kind of draw that picture. And once they've identified that, they do more of it. They do more of what they're good at, what they love. And whatever is working, just do more of it. And if it's not working, then try something else. And that's kind of how your neural pathways work anyway. Your brain's fires are the neurons fire up, the synapses connect, and then you kind of create habits after that. So sometimes it takes you to new paths when you allow yourself to do that. For me, I didn't suddenly didn't realize that as I'll be a single mom at this stage, instead of going for the lower hanging fruits of going back to media and all that, I found myself back at work, you know, at a time when my friends might be retiring or having a good life. So it is difficult, but man, I'm flowing. I'm having a great time, right? So the other group of people are the ones that I call are wise. I've named my daughter Sage for that same reason. And and these are the ones who always need to know to do the right thing. Not like the brown nosing kind of right thing, but not contrived, but genuine humanistic type of right things. And what my Zen teacher will always say, doing the correct action from moment to moment, or correct thought and correct speech. So recently, my daughter Sage, she's been complaining about a teacher she doesn't like, nah, 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 every day. And then, you know, she, I said, okay, fine, I'll write in. She said, I don't want her to be my teacher. I'll write in. And then she complains a few more days. She goes, wait, mom, she'll be really hurt if, you, if I said that or you said that. So how about you tell her that I will thrive under another teacher? I was like, wow, that's so diplomatic. Can you pause real quick? Um, I, can't, I can't catch up with my brains. Um, and that's so diplomatic. Of course, you take the time to compliment her on that achievement, because you know we all can do so much with nourishment. And it's really impressive because of course, she is entitled to feel what she wants to feel. But then she come, came to realize that the correct action was not just to vent about how she felt, but was also to consider somebody else's feelings. OK, now I can continue. Right, the, person, the people in this group, the wise people, they also have certain values. What I call, like, they, are, they understand what boundaries are. In my household, the boundaries is do no harm. You can, you're free to explore yourself being a child, being a teenager, all sorts of stuff. We make mistakes, right? But do no harm. And maybe you have some value system, some of you, like no stealing, no lying, no whatever else. I have a friend who won't even cheat five minutes on her parking coupons, right? So, but life is kind of complex. We can't just say no lying, no whatever. I need a pause for this one because I a story. So I'm going to test you, right? So you see, eh? 
Next one. Sorry. I'm so sorry to confuse you. OK, you see there are two forks, OK? So imagine you're walking down this little pathway, and you see a rabbit bounding down, cute little rabbit bounding, goes around the left line, a uh, left lane. And a few minutes later, or a few seconds later, you see this other hunter comes out and goes like, where's the rabbit? Right now, do you, which value system do you do? Do you tell the truth? Because you're supposed to tell the truth? Or do you tell a lie? What do you do? Which one? What's this one? The lie. The truth? The truth? Lie. Who says truth? Right. So then this is how I kind of teach my children, because you tell them no lying, right? So, but it comes back to do no harm. Now, if I told the guy, say, that way, and it ran after the rabbit, an innocent rabbit would be killed. <laughs> well, then you have to make your decision from moment to moment. I hope that you have the wisdom, as I hope my children, as I hope I do every day, to practice that moment to moment correct thought, speech, and action to make the right decision. And then the final group of people are what I call the compassionate ones, right? This is when, I mean, as you know, we kind of have those guidelines to help us moving forward. But compassion because they truly feel that you and I were kind of the same. You know, we try and do this, the right thing at any one time. And I haven't realized that a simple hobby of collecting recipes have provided me with such an opportunity to grow. And earlier I spoke about my daughter, so I got to talk about my son. Um, many years ago when we were in Shanghai, and then he was at that time five. So then he came home, well, I had a call from the teacher. I had to go to the school, and he, I saw that he had a big cut on his uh, eyebrow, and some kid had thrown his wooden plate at him. I was like, why didn't you tell me? Apparently, this child's been bullying him for days, punching him, stepping on him, and all sorts of stuff. Um, and he, I guess, why didn't you hit him back, right? <laughs> he goes like, but I don't want to hurt him, mom. I was like, oh, he was five, and he understood that. It's like, well, you know, next time, well, that's great, but next time you might have to hit back. And so the life is so complex, right? And what do you do? You teach them to hit back, and they start to fight. Like, now he boxes his, do his, his sister. And you have to kind of manage back. It's like, OK, okay do no harm, or be correct in your actions, and then, and so on and so forth. But then here it comes to the whole thing about you know, why we're doing this. Well, the motivation is kind of a little bit like be an idea. We want to be better. I want to be a better version of me, so we want to be better versions of ourselves. We want to be like better friends, better employee, whatever you're doing, a better boss, a better daughter, a better parent, a better truly, fully me, right? Now, as, I, as much as I work on myself, if you put me in the same room as my ex-husband, I go back in the negatives, right? So and then I again have to tell myself, what do I do? Go through the same motions, one foot in front of the other. So while I'm looking at my children and who Jonas a couple years ago I says, Mom, my heart is as big as a whale and it's filled with you in it. And if I can create so many more of such moments with all the people in my life, I'll be very happy. So I, what I do is I try to keep to what makes me flow. I try to keep to wise things, like the correct actions and all that. Try to be compassionate. Most of all, I try to always put one foot in front of the other. As you can see, there's room for all of us in this life. As we find out that you struggle, I struggle, personal journeys, work, anything, I mean, that in itself, all those imperfections is perfect. We're actually fully and quite complete. So I hope that wherever your feet takes you or your roots are, where you look out in the trees or the forest or whatever else, that you'll be able to find that you're complete, you're perfect, and that what's already naturally occurring is already in your roots. Thank you. Yeah, I do.